Briefly speaking, when you look at scriptures, when you look at scriptures, you find out that, um, I think there's a car stuck outside, so GJ, help me see how we can create space. Maybe somebody here needs to repack or something. When you look at scriptures, and the voluminous nature of scriptures. One of the things that comes to your heart immediately is that we were not designed to just journey in knowledge, but much more with understanding. I'll give a mundane example, then I'll rush back into my thought. How many of us? have seen eggs before. I don't know what I've seen. That's why I'm asking. You've seen an egg before. How many of us can accurately put in your fingers? How many eggs do you have in a crate? I don't know. 30. That's standard crate. How many of you can carry 30 eggs in your hands? Away from your bosom. Just carry 30 eggs like that. And then you move on. You're just in. You're doing all of that. How many of you can do it in your hands? Raise your hand. I know we have people with very strange competencies. That's what you mean, you can. How many of us can carry eggs, 30 eggs in a crate with two hands and move around comfortably? What I'm trying to explain is that there are systems that have been created to help you congregate things and carry all in a more comfortable way. So just like it is voluminous to run with 10 eggs all hanging in space or, or 30. And then you find out that these same 30 eggs can be carried in a crate more comfortably. There are systems in God with which the very voluminous nature of scriptures can be held for life. God may say 10 things. And these 10 things, if you sit with them, you find out that they connect and produce. That one wisdom is something that you can execute sometimes, even though you have forgotten about the things that you have done. Are you with me? You've forgotten about the 10 verses of scripture, totally forgotten about all of them. But there is a wisdom that these 10 verses have crystallized. And I said to us a few weeks ago, these wisdoms are crystallized by what we call understanding. Understanding is like a spider's web. It congregates knowledge and then harmonizes them so that something that is actionable can be produced. It will be difficult to cram 30 scriptures. But if you read those 30 scriptures, you can bring out a lesson. That's what understanding does. So if you forget what understanding is, understanding is like that crate of egg that makes life easier to live having 30 different egg. Is it pieces of egg? They call it. Say pieces none. Okay. 30 egg pieces have become only one thing. That's understanding. And then you can now journey with that one thing. So the Bible advertises the multiplicity of divine communication. Understanding therefore becomes a bridge into the wisdom with which we will live out our days. The Bible advertises a God that is a communicator. And God is a very robust communicator. I was doing a study of Genesis chapter 1. And I found out that. What's that? In Genesis chapter 1. You have only 31 verses. God spoke 14 times in 31 verses.
there were the clear verses that had and God said there were the other verses that inferred that he spoke because the Bible said he called something something 14 times in 31 verses so if you take 31 out of 14 what are you left with 17 and that's it's that's almost like a 45 46 percent in one verse in one chapter a chapter that was supposed to give us a picture of the acts of God he means he almost spoke as many times as he acted if we take a more diligent look you will find out that God spoke more than he acted in Genesis chapter 1 because some of those verses that make up the 17 were just descriptive evening and morning day one evening and morning so if you take evening and morning they want to six or they want to five the sixth day was man they want to five that's five out of 17 may look with you have 12. he spoke more than he acted he brings a wisdom that no matter the shape of the season god brings solutions more by instruction than by intervention. For every miracle that you see, there are at least two instructions that must have been given. So a man who is waiting, God will do something, God will do something is most likely have missed out on two things that God said do and you will see. You remember God did not split the Red Sea by himself. He told Moses, what do you have in your hand? Don't shout. Stretch the rod, split the sea. So if Moses said, God do something, oh. there's one song we used to sing. Um, Baba, do you want that? Oh. You know the song? They do wonder. It's a good song. But if that was Moses' song, God will have done nothing. Because as far as that intervention was concerned, Moses was supposed to obediently respond to an instruction and not wait for a direct divine intervention. Are you with me? A man who has no time to listen to God, we live based on that ratio, most likely with only one third. Of the possibilities of God because the two other possibilities the two third of possibilities are given to those who hear and obey that's why we cannot overemphasize whether you are writing exams or not see even if you are writing exams make sure that it is not your time with God that suffers during exams you can turn down on movie time turn down on comedy time turn down on TikTok time turn down on friends visitations but do not tone down on your god time you are safest your life is most accurate built around your times with god if that time suffers you have started suffering and time will unveil that you are a sufferer it means that the one who wants to maximize seasons whether they are born seasons of abundance or seasons of scarcity must operate with the ability to congregate the informations that scriptures bring onto a kind of wisdom. It is in this mode that we can master seasons. Now, because of time, I'm just going to share two thoughts and then when we come next week Tuesday, if Jesus tarries, because that's how our fathers used to speak, is if Jesus tarries. These days people speak with so much confidence, like they're going to be here forever. We want him to come. And it's all these things we end. When we leave, you can't be president over people who are not there. Abi, if we are gone, you can't be our president again. If we are gone, we can't buy fuel. I still bought, I think I bought 1,050 today. If, if, you are, if you are not our president, you can't fix our fuel price. Abi, now, okay, you like it here. Oh, you are one of those who wants to marry before he comes. Now, people say those frivolous things. I have not given back to children. 
I think when Jesus did, I did, I did go. Say me, I've not graduated. I want to graduate in God. You want to write tomorrow's exam instead of having him come today. That may be funny, but we must live in the consciousness that he will come. Our lives will be more guided that way. Most of the lascivious expressions we see in the body right now are built into the progressive quenching of the consciousness that the one who went will return. He that had this hope, not he that had hope, this hope, and that hope is built into his return. He that had this hope keepeth himself pure. It means where that hope is not, purity will be a struggle. Are you with me? So when Satan wants to damage the stature of a generation in purity, one of the things he touches is their consciousness of the return of the Christ. Like in Kotabati, he said, I said, when now, one of the greatest stones upon which the wisdom for any season is built is the consciousness, and in other words, another word for consciousness would be the awareness of the blessing. The blessing. About a week ago, I took us to read from Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And I want us to look at it again. And then draw a few inferences here and there. And see how far we can go. And if we have time, um, I'll just show us something else from Genesis chapter 8. Or we may just close at this point. The Bible says, and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Two other words or phrases define the word replenish. One is fill up. Another one is restore lost value. So that you had rice in a bucket and then you finished eating it. When you go to the market, what you are doing is procuring to replenish. That means to fill up a store that wants words. So, uh, Minister Ifeg goes to the market and buys a tin of milk, Abi, And then maybe pastor likes tea every day. Are you a tea person? See how you know this? <laughs> so, he likes tea. So, uh, there are different kinds of tea people. The way some people handle milk, your heart will cut. So the way Pastor nodded, he said, maybe it's that kind of person. Abi Ife is a milk person. She's scratching her head. I understand. So maybe he takes like five spoons and the milk goes to half. What Ife will need to do so that their house does not become a house of teens is to go and buy what? A refill pack. The process is still replenish. Are you with me? So you feel back. You restore value. So that if pastor comes and takes his spoon, some of us do it to test the level. Just to co -co -co. The tin is loudest where it is empty. May God give you understanding. That emptiness and noise are synonymous. You understand that? People are filled and restrained. Um, so you now hit it. Ah, can it in low level? As if spirits came to drink it. What you will do is just pour into it, return the value so that next time when you hit it, the thing just doom, doom, doom. Ah, say thank you, my wife. That's how it works. God knows that the, the, the value system in the earth is one that will depreciate with usage. And the assignment of God's man is not only to be fruitful, not only to multiply, is to look for places where value has reduced and to fill up that value. We have that potential. 
that everywhere you come to, once value is down, you have tools in God, spiritual. Some of them have crystallized into the natural, but they're essentially spiritual to be able to give back value, to be able to fill it up again. I'm saying you are finishing exams. Some of you will be traveling home. It is possible that all that enters your home is you. And what happens to the finances of that home is replenished. It is built around not the fact that you brought money, but there is a spiritual reality that you carry that creates an atmosphere of unusual favor and it grows everything that is ending. Everybody has something. Everybody has something. Replenish. So since you moved into this hostel, huh? people have been having money. Since you packed into this shopping mall, our business has been doing well. What that person is operating is replenish. Since you started farming here, the arms you have been getting are big. It means that person has ability to manipulate the soil. He's not using fertilizer. It's a presence. I've not preached mad that my sermon, Jerry, on creating atmospheres. I have an old one. Maybe 2017, 18. Help me find it. Creating atmospheres. I know we may not even be on Telegram. Maybe that time we used to use Google Drive straight. But I know we have a sermon like that. We must all learn to do it again. Because earth operates by atmosphere. I shared with you on Sunday, even healing operates by atmosphere. So wise men first create it. So you can create an atmosphere of abundance. Are you with me? Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. You find out that these four things, which are the outworking of the blessing, were not apportioned a season of expression. And that's the first thing God told me when I started thinking the famine. They have no season of oppression. Of oppression. It means whether in a season of abundance or in a season of scarcity, the command is the same. When everything scatters, what you should look for is the things that are constant. And one of the things the Lord told me to say is that the blessing is constant. Nothing has happened to what God has put on your life. Are you with me? Many of you have never used it. You've lived under what you call general mercies. Uh, you know that if there's hold up, if there's hold up, everybody packs, right? What the dignitary does, some vehicles have sirens. They don't bring it out. The siren is in the car, you know. You just see something like a telephone cable on the dashboard. Once the road blocks, what they do is pull out their siren, put it on the car, and once it goes, space. Are you with me? I remember that Apostle Simon's meeting we went for in glory. Remember the meeting? That was 2015. I was the one the, the pastors told to usher in me. So I met him in the car. Oh, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. You know, opened the car. We got into the hall. That hall, that TLCC, right? The place was jammed. So I was now, I to pass. The people did not agree. The person they came to see minister is at the door. He now said, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. So began to pray under his breath. You now began to feel an essence. So everybody was like, and once the once the thing comes to you, you sense there's somebody, there's somebody, and then they cleared, and both of us got to the front. It's always in every man. It's always in every man. You have not put pressure on it. Me and Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, the other Daniel, that's Daniel Senior. Yeah. We went to eat in this Alata. I remember that day. When we were going on the road, one of Daniel's friends who was learning the keyboard under Daniel had told Daniel he had listened to me and wanted to meet me on this same on that road. So we met the guy, and before Daniel could say, This is my pastor, the guy started gisting with him. And the me that you know, 
I will not disturb that. Say, it's your friend. I just stood beside. And they did that for almost 20 minutes. <coughs> the friend now looked at me and said, Bros, no vexo. Now I this so. I said, okay. So they continued gisting. I saw that Daniel was not comfortable, but uh, uh, two of us are NFA now. We are not going anywhere. I've been now. We are just going to eat. So after a while, Daniel now said, Ah, that my pastor. The guy said, yeah, ah. And he valued the guy. I want to listen. He said, This is my pastor. The guy now quickly prostrated and said he was sorry. So we continued. We now got to Alata. Have you been to this Alata before? Everybody's struggling at the counter, right? So we stayed there long, almost another 30 minutes. When the thing touched me, I now looked at one of the people. I said, Sister Blessings, come and serve us. So she now came and served us. Then I now asked her, is your name Blessing? She said, yes. She said, you knew this girl all along that you left us here. I said, I didn't know her all along. At the point where I could no longer bear, pressure came on a gift and then the name came. There are things that you have inside you. You've never been bullied to use them before. You don't know that there's favor on your life. So you have you you claim that you are a spiritual person, but you have benefited from natural experiences all of your life. You've never written ex exams as a spiritual man before. You read like a natural person. When you get to class, everybody reads. They sleep, boop, 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 boop. They start from page one to page 50. No lecturer gives questions on all the pages. No. But natural men don't have the tools to know where the lecturer will bring the question from. A spiritual man can discern it. When you are tired of being natural, you will push up. You push up. There are things I don't want to share. But our ATM cards are not that weak. May God give you understanding. They can draw out money from zero accounts. They can. If the money falls into your pocket, there are names you can call it. But if it comes out of the machine, that's a legit way to come. It's between me and God how that card brought out money and whose money it is. If you do not understand that you are blessed and that these consequences which is a life that is under the influence of the blessing if you don't know that they are designed to be constant in all seasons you will be anxious there are things that are given you know when you do mathematical questions they tell you given there are certain values that you already have right you now look for the others when you are trying to understand scriptures, scripture prays with the consciousness that everybody knows what is given. When it is suggested that you may have forgotten, Paul comes and tells you, know ye not that you will expect you should know. Are you with me? You are wondering why the Bible says be anxious for nothing. That statement is built on the consciousness that you know what is given. Are you with me? That the question of your supply, the question of your survival in Christ, that your faith will not fail, is not built around three, four unknowns. Many of the things you currently call unknowns have already been assigned values. And if you have stayed in scriptures, you will have known their values. That earth seasons can change, but the man from heaven operates in constancy. His economy is built around the pillar called the blessing. And the things that God gives actually advertise the character of God. The blessing is as constant as the giver. Make a buy. It's as constant as Him. Let me close. Huh. Oh, all these half half things I used to do. I need. Okay. So next week I'll first do my teaching before we ask our question. Because when I was studying, I now got to a point and I said, Lord, but there was a reset. I hope you know there was a reset. Genesis 7, 8, 9 to about 11 was a reset. To about 10 was a reset. That's the newest thing. 
Are you with me? So what if after the reset, men were wiped out, that earth was invariably wiped out, a new one was created? Do you find out that the things that God said to Noah were the same things he said to Adam? It was to make Adam know, uh, Noah know, that the reset has not cancelled what I said. Your world has gone through change. And I've said it in some places that year 2020 was a reset. And that reset was physicalized. So that many people said that our earth matured in things by almost 50 years in 12 months. I need to announce to you that 2024 is another reset year. But it's subtle. It means if you do not know it prophetically, you will think that because we are walking around, there's no lockdown. We can compare things. Let's look at global economics. Let's look at Nigerian economics. The journeys we made with the Naira this year have never been made before. The journeys we made with fuel have never been made before. If they told you that fuel will sell at 1-1 in a filling station, you will have thought it would take like six years. Too many things. The price differences. The way they moved in the last one year are mind-blowing. It means something was reset. Many years were infused into one. That's the shape of it prophetically. The kind of things that are coming to light in the body of Christ, the kind of truths that have been challenged, you will have thought it will have taken 20 years. All of them are happening within a short time. Those are the signs we are reading. So there is a reset. The journeys, even in information technology, the, the user-friendly artificial intelligence systems that we see now in the last one year have moved through years. Man's possibility in the last one year was like a 20 year journey. We are in a reset year. And so I said to the Lord, you showed me that this year is a reset year. What can we do? He said, can you see what I said to him? I said to him, because I'm still committed to the blessing. I didn't change my words. He said, so when things become uncertain, I don't know what the price of things will be in the market. It means there's more compromise around even church people than before. Are you with me? So the faith of a lot of people is beginning to fail. Why? Because one of the things that causes faith to fail is when iniquity increases. Is that not what scripture said? Yes. So I may even be afraid, Lord, am I going to be standing what is going to become of me? He said, find the things that are constant. And I wrote down three things. Just find the things that are constant. Build your life around pillars that are immovable. He said, one, the blessing of God is constant. So that we can close. I'll share on them next week. Two. The one who commands the blessing. Okay, let me give you the second one. The blessings of the Lord are constant too. Covenant with God is constant. Remember what I told you in 200 level? I said, serve Jesus. Take your academics, tie it with a rope and bring Jesus into it. I will mind your work. You will mind my own. What happened to your academics? You started climbing. When you want to enter a fight or a season and you have precious things, what you should do when it wants to start raining and your wristwatch was inherited, was a pure Rolex that was inherited, what do you look for? You buy a polythene bag. It's the non-chemical engineering people that call it nylon. So we call it polythene. So you buy a polythene bag and you drop it inside it and tie it. You know that if water falls on you, you will dry. But that wristwatch, the life may never be the same again. So when time happens like this, you pick on the valuable things in your life and you bind them to God by covenant. When I found out that my life was going to be open to a lot of warfare, I took every human being that was precious to me, including members here, to say, Lord, I will fight your battles. 
but there will be no stories around you. You will keep every one of them. If I've ever fought street fight before, have you before? You've never fought before. Have you watched before? If he's wearing a nice shoe, the first thing he does is he removes his shoe, he puts it aside. He takes his wristwatch, he gives to somebody who is not part of the fight. If he's wearing nice glasses, maybe Ray-Ban, he takes it, he gives it to the guy. If he's wearing a nice shirt, because he doesn't want to dress home naked, he takes off his shirt, he now goes to fight with boxers. After he has finished, he puts on his hand chain. Everything goes to somebody who is not directly part of the fight, somebody that the adversary cannot attack to collect those things. Our mothers used to pray. My mom used to pray. One No, Iba Iba cooking fire. I warn you, It means he thinks we curate with you are safe. So my wife, my children, the ministry. You are the keeper of my reputation. The promise is I will do nothing to make myself look larger than I am. But if you raise me, you will keep me up. Are you with me? So what's the secret of going up? Just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He will take you through process. When he leaves you, he will keep you up. I will bless thee. I will make out of thee a great nation. I will make your name great. I, I. If it is God that does it, you will need to undo the I before you can cancel it. The reason why I will not steal from you is that what I steal from you, God cannot protect. So I will wait for him to give me something legitimate. I was showing somebody my Android phone. Where's that my phone? I said, that my phone has done five years. The person said, eh? I said, yes. I said, yes. I said, yes. But that, that, that phone, that phone, that phone is insured not by Mansard Insurance. The LL Young insures it. I used to have one phone, one phone. It was um, a close here. It was um, was it was it was it an iPhone? No, iPhone. No, take one man. Um, eh? Was it was it the Sony Ericsson? No, it was the Nokia. Some, is it Nokia X? N800. Yes. It was Nokia's first response to the iPhones. Very solid phone. So, I said, God is the one that keeps it. And I went to a bank, Diamond Bank in Bodija. So, I was filling um, teller. And I put my phone like this, copied number. I didn't put my mind that I dropped phone there. Meanwhile, the person beside me was carrying a, a, a spirit. It was a bad case. It, the wife of one of the senior lawyers in the battle. But who will steal anything that hangs around her? So, I now got inside. Ah, my phone, my phone. I went back there, I didn't see the phone. Then I said, you didn't bring the phone. So, I appealed to somebody. The lady got to know me. Ah, pastor, you. I was working in the battle that time. So they went to the CCTV and they saw her, how she took my phone. Meanwhile, she was even using an iPhone. She had two iPhones. She was not about money. She, she could not. If there's anybody like that, it ends now. Sing a show, she lived to feel a being a sincere life in. Do you know that in about the 40 minutes we were looking for the phone, the woman had got into Sabo in Ibadan. She wanted to sell the phone. So I now sent a message to that other one that God owns this phone. The person who sells it, the person who buys it, will go down. So immediately the Malams put it on and they saw the text because my SIM was still on it. They gave it back to her. We were not buying. The bank took security, went to Sabo, traced her there because she told her friend she needed to get to Sabo, picked her and brought her back, asked me if I was going to press charges. 
I was thinking of what to do. Then the husband came. Heartbroken. I will send you back to your parents. I'm tired that she does it everywhere. Can pick people's bags, can pick people's phones. Can... She said, must pick something. And I told him, I'm, I can't press charges. My phone is back, but it can't go. Thank you for my phone. I said, but I can help you. Let's take care of what is inside this woman. So we prayed a short prayer. Told him to take his wife home. I don't believe that that thing will go home. We turn back and Because if they brought back my phone, they should not go home with something. Are you with me? That's how it works. If you wear a shoe for two years, even if it's the only shoe that you have, it should show that the shoe is blessed. Are you with me? So speak to it. You will not always have one shoe. After a while, you have 10, 20. But when you have one, that shoe must be preserved under what you carry. Your clothes are not supposed to wear out well. That's what Israel walked under. And Israel advertised something greater than preservation. It showed us that the things men wear have living dimensions. Because they were going through a season. That's one thing that happens in the famine. God, by the blessing, gives preservation to what you have. So you may not be able to buy 10 trousers, but your five trousers will remain in good shape. By instruction, by providence. Their shoes grew. Their clothes grew. I know you don't know. When you give back to children, you find out that at a particular age, you buy new clothes. They have not worn the new clothes. The day the child wants to wear it, you find out that the trousers become three quarter. What do you do? Will you condemn the child to three quarter wear? Oh, then Tasha, so bow the fair Tasha. Abi? What to Lord me? To buy the right lady to go to. I buy a near near. These are the issues. I used two shoes throughout university. Throughout. And that, the other shoe, I still gave it to a friend. That's the one I said I gave that my friend. If I sell this our house, I'll produce the belt I used in universities. One. One. It's a pure leather belt. Daddy said, I'll buy only this one for you. Because in our house, we don't buy 20 shoes. 20 bad, bad shoes. You buy one good shoe. And God brings preservation to them. I was telling my brother-in-law is here. I said, this car in our family is as a Tokumbo car that we brought. This our car is seven years old. Does it look like a seven years Tokumbo car? The hand of the Lord is on it. You know I had two accidents with this car a few months ago. The car spun round on one side. That's facing the lorry side, in front of the airport, flipped to the other side, then flipped back with a blown tire, and I parked it. On my way back, one down got a trailer, did, um, bodied me into the bush. The car went into the bush, came back. You can check the car, there's a scratch on it. Even the car has sense that some things must not happen to it, because it's under the blessing. That's what happens. Because one way that God preserves in the famine is that he ensures that you don't spend money on the wrong things. What you have is enough for you. So I'll keep it there. I have about eight scriptures, but I think we need to go home the exams tomorrow. Even when you go for your exams, don't go with the fear that you will forget what you have read. You are blessed. And the blessing was not, his potency was not built into off exam season. The Lord said to me, let me close, in Genesis 8.22, it's a common verse, it's not one of my verses, but what was one of the things he said to me, he said, as long as the earth remains, what are the seasons? Seed, time, and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night. So there are four possible calibrations of times and seasons. He said there's no famine inside it. These seasons are more real than a famine season. They are more real. 
it's an earth-based thing it's not a heavenly reality it means it does not affect the things that are of heaven I didn't come to hype you tonight I just came to remind you the Bible and this is your manner please watch channel TV please watch TVC please watch Al Jazeera watch CNN watch BBC what are the big news stations there's this Nigerian station that does what their party station what's that their own Arise TV please watch those stations you can even listen to Parrot FM or whatever FM you want to listen to but this is your manual this is what defines your seasons if it is not here it means God doesn't know about it if it is not here it means that what God has for you is not going to be affected by what is out there you are planted by the waters and as that tree the Bible said he shall not be careful in the day of drought you know what it means not to be careful uh, come on come on next Tuesday I'll show you it means when he's considering the, uh, the things to do Ah, he will not be careful. His life is his life. Are you with me? He's not saving because drought is coming. He's saving because he has an instruction to do that. There is no aspect of his life that he is being inspired by situations. No. The drought there was year, not day. I think it's the year. Help me find the verse of scripture. This one says, shall not, it says, it shall not see when heat cometh. He speaks of dulled consciousness. They say there's heat. Oh, say, I'm not aware. Like our oh, wow. may God give you understanding. Baba is always not aware. Abi. He not be aware. Eh, when you move, ah. no, 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 no. So the drought can be a year, but he will not be careful. He will not be careful. He's blessed. He's blessed. Can you join your hands to your neighbor? We are that blessed family. We are that blessed family. So next week, the choir will do a song. Find the song, The Blessings of Abraham. I think it's Donna Lawrence. I'm blessed. I want you to prophesy to your neighbor. You're blessed. You're blessed. Lina Tosi, Faraha Tate Sesina Tahaya, Kembo Sofa Take Otoliasta. Yes, tonight we break camp in that atmosphere. We ship it into houses, we ship it into homes, we ship it into hostels. We are blessed. we do are blessed the words we say establish our reality it is spiritual but it produces in the natural Santa Kifatia Takaba Tota Farada Ah 